like Jesus, to pray according to the example of the Master. We thank you, Father, for it. Holy Spirit, you are our helper, our counselor, our support, our guidance. Help us to pray today. Bozai prayer, life-changing prayer, transforming prayer, miraculous producing prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for all those that you are going to draw in. That you, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Father God, desire to minister to. And I yield myself as the oracle of the living God. That you enable me to minister according to your will. And I thank you for it. Thank you for what you're going to do with your word that is being spoken today. Your word that cannot return void. Use this word all over the world to touch people, to save souls, to encourage your people, to empower them, to deliver them, to bring them out of bondage in the name of Jesus. God is not by mind nor by power. It is by your spirit. Let your spirit do what your spirit is able to do today. None of me and all of the King of glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome. I welcome all of you. Our topic today is a fantastic one, and I'm excited about what God is going to do today. The topic is my season of rapid manifestation. The season of man rapid manifestation is the topic we're going to be praying about today. And I thank the Lord for what he's going to do and how he's going to move in our lives as we are needing him for rapid manifestation. But before we go into today's prayer, as usual, I want us to, as a unit, say the Lord's prayer. All of you on the prayer line, those of you joining on Facebook, let us say the Lord's prayer. The sample that Jesus gave to us to pray. I welcome all of you. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Our heavenly Father, the only Father we know, the only Father we have, the only Father that is able and capable. We come before your holy throne. Thanking you, looking to you, believing in you, trusting in you, and crying out to you. Because you are Father that hears the cry of his children. We hallow, we bless, we honor your name. We trust in your name, in the ability that, in the power that your name carry. We look to your name today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your kingdom come. Father, let it come in our situation. Let it come in our lives. Let your kingdom come on this land. Let it come. And let only your will be done. We trust in your will. We believe in your will. Let only your will be done in all areas of our lives. In all aspects of our lives. On this Facebook life. On the prayer line. Let your will be done. And Father, forgive us of our sins. As we forgive others. Lord, don't let us fall into temptation. Lead us away from temptation. And of course, we trust you to deliver us from anything that is called evil. Deliver us from all evil. Because thine is the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to you. Yours is the power. You own all power. And the glory, glory belongs to you. And you give glory to whom you show glory and mercy to whom you show mercy. So it's not of him that will it, or of him that run it. It is God who shows mercy. Father, thank you for your mercy today. That is new every morning. We've sinned against you. Grieve the Holy Spirit. Forgive us. Show us mercy and hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I thank all of you, my beautiful, wonderful, awesome people. Janet, bless you. Maria, Erica, Pastor Greg, all of you on the prayer line, I'm excited about today's prayer. My season of rapid manifestation. There's always a due season. No matter what is going on, no matter what we're encountering, there is always a due season. It's a law. Because the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, it says for everything, every purpose, 
there's a season. What you're going through, where you are right now in your life is a season. And that season comes and it goes. So if you're in a challenging place, it's not permanent. It's a season and it's going to pass. When we learn to wait on the Lord, believing in his promise, then he shows up and he manifests just at the right time. This season that you are in is not going to kill you. This season that you are in is not going to destroy you. This season that you are in is not going to last forever. It's a season and it's a season that will pass. In the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 28. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, none of my words will be postponed anymore. But the word which I speak will be done, says the Lord. God is telling you and I today, the promises I have made, the things I've showed you, the words you have read in my word, they will not be delayed any longer in your life. There is a manifestation that is about to show up. I pray your manifestation will show up and it will no longer be delayed. The word postponed means delay. The blessings of God will not be delayed. The answer of God for you will not be delayed. The solution that God has for you will not be delayed. The victory that God has for you, it will not be delayed. I don't know what you are dealing with right now. But God's answer to that situation, it will not be delayed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When God shows up, he will show up. He will not postpone the victory he has for you. The success, he will not postpone it any longer. In the name of Jesus. We serve a God that never comes late. He's always on time. God is always right on time. And his chiming is always perfect. You say, how can you say that? The Bible gives us stories in the Bible to let us know this is the God we serve and this is the way he operates. When Peter was asked for tax money, he owed tax money. He needed to pay tax money in Matthew 17, 27. And he went to Jesus. He said, Jesus, they asked him for tax money. And Jesus said, we don't want to offend. We do want to do our pay our part. We want to pay whatever it is that we owe the government. And Jesus said to Peter, go do what you know to do. You are a fisherman. There are times that when we are in challenge, in challenging place, we are in difficulties. God is telling us, you have a role to play. Go and do what you know to do. You've been equipped for something. You've trained for something. You've gone to school for something. You've experienced something. You walked in a certain place. Go and do what you know to do. Peter, go to the sea and the fish will come out. Open the mouth of the fish and take the money out that you need. What? Really? Jesus? Supernatural? Yes. But for God to do the supernatural, he asks us to do the natural. The natural was Peter, you go to the sea. Wait on the fish. And when God comes into your situation, it will not miss you. Your blessing will not miss you. That fish did not drop the coin in the sea. That fish did not come out for somebody else that was there before Peter got there. That fish did not open its mouth for somebody else to take the money. Your answer that God has for you will not go to somebody else. The solution to your situation it will not go to somebody else. Whatever blessing God have ordained, God have assigned, that God has promised for you, you will not miss it. You don't have to worry. You will not miss your blessing. You will not fail in that thing that God has asked you to do. You will do your part and God will do his part. God is about to show up and bring a solution in a way that you would have never dreamt possible. In a way you would have never thought possible. That fish carried that coin. That fish 
brought enough for Peter to pay his taxes and for Jesus to pay his taxes. May the answer to your prayer be more than enough for you. May the answer to your prayer meet every need that you are petitioning God for. Because God is a sufficient God. Because God is more than enough. That which you need, may God be more than enough for you. May the answer that comes be more than enough for you. May it be sufficient in the name of Jesus. Every good thing that God has for you, you will not miss it. You will not miss your victory. You will not miss your favor. You will not miss your provision. You will not miss your deliverance. What God has for you, you will not miss it. The sea could not swallow up that blessing. Other people could not steal that blessing. What God has given to you, no power, no spirit, no person will steal it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare there will be no more delay to your promotion. There will be no more delay to your provision. There will be no more delay to your manifestation. There will be no more delay to your deliverance. Where have you been bound up for years? What area? What circumstances have held you bound for years? May the God of the universe begin to change your story. Begin to change your situation. Begin to change your circumstances. It doesn't matter what it is. God will show up and change your situation. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is able, abundantly able, to deliver those who trust in him. God is coming, will he? Quickly. Anishka, God is coming quickly. Maria, God will show up for you. Ha! It will be suddenly. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will let his timing be perfect just for you. That fish came just right on time. Right on time for Peter. Right as Peter was walking up to the sea. That's when that fish came out. Because that fish got instruction from the one who made the sea, who made the sea, who made the fish, who made everything. And that fish obeyed what the maker have told that fish to do. What God has told things, situation, people to do in your life, they cannot say no. The sea could not hold that fish back. That fish could not hold itself back. He had to respond. Every element, everything in heaven and on earth was created by God. And as you talk to God, who made everything about what you need, the God who made everything will speak to what he has made to meet your need. Let me say that again. I don't know what you're believing God for. But the God who made heaven and earth knows how to use everything that he has made to respond to what you have talked to him about in your closet. In your closet. That's why the Bible says our confidence must be in the God who made the heavens and earth. Don't try to manipulate anything. Don't try to manipulate anybody. The only person that needs to know about your situation. The only person you need to cry out to and trust about your situation is God. And the God who knows, knows how to move in the heart of man. To come at the right time to do what you have talked to him about. Sometimes we don't even need to talk to people. You talk to God and God knows the people. You talk to God and God knows the situation. Imagine a fish out of millions and millions and millions and billions of fishes in the sea. God spoke to one fish at a particular time when Peter needed money. God put the money in that fish mouth and God told that fish, only give it to Peter. Only give it to Peter and had enough. 
God is able to do exceedingly above anything you could ever hope. I'm not even saying think. I'm not even saying expect. It, it will exceed your expectation. Have we been expecting from God what will exceed our expectation? What God is able to do is able to exceed your expectation. I pray, may this be your season of exceeded expectation. May God exceed your expectation in your need. May God exp exceed your expectation in your belief. May he exceed your expectation in your prayer. May God exceed your expectation in what product you are able to do or you desire to do. May God exceed it in the name of Jesus. May he bring to an end everything that is being shameful, ugly, painful, uncomfortable. May God step in and do it. Let the glory of God be upon your life. Let it be upon your situation. Let it be upon your circumstances in the mighty name of Jesus. The promises of God that are yea and amen, it will happen for you. It will no longer be delayed. It will no longer be held back. It will no longer be held down. It will no longer be disturbed. In the name of Jesus, hold on to the promise. Believe in the promise. Trust in his ability. Trust in his love. Trust in his goodness and God will show up for you. In Ezekiel 37 verse 14, and shall put my spirit, he says, and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I the Lord have spoken it and perform it, saith the Lord. What God has spoken in your life, Maria, Leona, Garland, Angela, what God has spoken concerning your life. He said his spirit will be put on it and when the spirit of God is put on it, it will not be delayed. It will manifest. Even when it looks like it is delayed, ha, there are circumstances that happen in your life and you're like, God, why did you wait so long? Why did you hold back so long? It reminds me of Mark 5. Jairus went to Jesus and the Bible said he sought him greatly. He sought Jesus. Oh, Jesus, my daughter is dying. My daughter need help. What looks too big for you? What looks overwhelming? What is causing you anxiety? What is stressing you out? What trouble are you facing? Jairus, he's a leader, leader of the synagogue. And he came, Jesus, seeking him greatly, the Bible said. And he said, Lord, my daughter is dying. And Jesus was following him to go to his house. As Jesus was going, there was interruption. Interruption here, interruption there. People pulling on him. People needing miracle. In the meantime, Jairus was thinking to himself, hurry up, Lord. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. My daughter is about to die. Oh God, hurry up. Don't let my daughter die. Hurry up. I'm sure even if he didn't say it as a parent, I know he was thinking it. God move. God move. God do something. God, don't hold back. God, move quickly. God, ignore these people that are holding you. And come and respond to my case. It's an emergency. This is an emergency. My 12-year-old daughter is terribly sick. Jairus was moving towards Jesus. And here comes this woman. This woman. Surrounded by all kinds of people. And all these people were pulling on Jesus. The woman with the issue of blood heard. What did she hear? What did she hear? The woman with the issue of blood. What did she hear? An opportunity. Opportunity to be healed. She heard. Opportunity to be delivered. She heard. Opportunity for her lifeless body 
to begin to hope again. She heard, my opportunity is this, to not die. Because every day, blood was coming out of my body. I was dying. And this woman was in a desperate situation. People were surrounding him. I needed help. And I had to encourage myself by saying, if I could just touch him, if I could touch Jesus, I would live. If I could touch him, I'll be healed. If I could touch him, my miracle will show up. And this man, Jairus, is standing looking. Jesus went. While he was waiting, somebody came. Jairus, Jairus, Jairus. Leave him. Don't bother Jesus anymore. It's finished for you. Your daughter is gone. She's dead. Your case is hopeless. How many times have you looked at your situation and you thought, my case is hopeless? The situation I've been praying for is dead. The marriage I've been hoping for is ended up in divorce. The child I've been praying for is totally out of control now. It's too late. But Jesus said to Jairus, what did they just tell you? Your daughter is dead? Don't worry. Jesus said, only believe. If you would just believe, it does not matter what looks like it has died in your life. The fire of the Holy Spirit can awaken what has died. And Jairus, believe Jesus. You said to believe you. My daughter have died. I believe. Jesus went to his house. Jesus told the people, the 12 year old, she's just sleeping. And the people were laughing, thinking, you don't know what you're talking about. We were here. It doesn't matter what people have seen concerning your situation or what they say. Because when Jesus says there's hope, yes, nobody can say no. Even the dead girl could not say no when Jesus called her. See, when Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Redeemer say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus say yes, nobody can say no. When Jesus says no to the devil concerning you, the devil can say yes. When Jesus says yes concerning the blessing and the promise that he has spoken concerning your life, nobody can say no. When Jesus said that little girl was sleeping, the people were like, you don't know what you're talking about. She's dead. And Jesus said, all of you that are doubting, I put you out. And he went in the room and he called the little girl and he grabbed her hand and he said, get up. And she got up. What has died in your life? I call it to get up. What has the enemy destroyed? The word of God called it forth. Call forth your finances. We call forth your healing. We call forth your restoration. We call forth your promotion. We call forth your work with the God. We call forth your business. We call forth your ministry. Come forth. In the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God cannot return void. The word that has gone forth, it must produce life. Let life begin to be produced in your life. Every ungodly delay, every ungodly hindrance, every ungodly limitation, may God bring it to an end. May your testimony begin to manifest. The woman with the issue of blood that people have gotten away from, Doctors have taken all her money, couldn't help her. When she got healed, all of a sudden, because she was speaking the word, what are you saying concerning your issue? Because she was making declaration before she got to Jesus, if I could just touch him, if I could touch him, my shame will end. If I could touch him, my healing will show up. If I could touch him, there will be no more rejection. If I could touch him, the life that has been coming out of me will stop and I will begin to receive life. Touch Jesus today. Touch him with your words because now we have words to use. And the Bible says what you say 
you shall receive. What you say shall manifest. What are you saying concerning your issue? We all have issues. Her issue was the issue of blood. Some of us, our issue is our children. Some of us, our issue is our health. Some of us, our issue is our finances. Some of us, our issue, we can never keep a relationship. Some of us, our issue is we can never keep a job. All of us have issues. Some of us is family issues. I know all of you are the sound of my voice. There's an issue in your family right now. An issue. An issue. I have issues. We all have issues. But what are you saying about your issue? I pray for your issue today. Whatever the issue may be, the God who gives solution to issues, may that God, may that God visit you today and give solution to your issue in the mighty name of Jesus. The issue you've been dealing with for many years, maybe. Suddenly, this woman have us issued for 12 years. 12 years. She's had issue. 4,000 months, I believe. She's had issues. 365 days. She had issues. Times 12, there was issue. Issue that nobody could help her. Whatever your issue is today, I come in agreement that the same God who showed up for her because she heard that same God will show up for you. May you hear what you need that will produce your miracle. May you hear what you need to hear that will change your story. May you be at the right place at the right time to hear the right thing that will cause you to make a different move. It was what she heard that caused her, instead of going to the doctor or staying at home by herself and dying, that made her go where Jesus was going to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not miss your opportunity because she heard opportunity and she was not willing to give up Opportunity of a lifetime during the lifetime of that opportunity. Opportunity is going to come to your way. But that opportunity has a lifetime. May you not miss the opportunity of a lifetime during the lifetime of that opportunity. That woman came during the lifetime of that opportunity for her healing. She pressed her way. She was not willing. She was desperate to let go. She got on her knees. It didn't matter who surrounded Jesus. Nobody was going to stop her from getting her miracle that day. Nobody will stop you from getting your own miracle in the name of Jesus. As the miracle worker show up, may you get your own miracle. As the miracle worker show up, may your situation change in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us begin to trust God for manifestation of that which we are believing God for in Jesus name in Psalm 102 verse 2 it says hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble incline thy ear unto me in the day when I call answer me speedily answer me speedily what time frame are you believing God to do your work to move in your life you don't have to say, Jesus, I want it done right now. You can pray because the Bible says, now faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that sin. So you can believe for now. Salvation is for now. So you can believe. You can also say, God, please move quickly. Move speedily. Throughout the Bible, you see that. The psalmist here was saying, Incline your ears to me in the day when I call. Answer me speedily. Answer me quickly. Save my marriage quickly. Deliver my children quickly. Bless my finances quickly. Let there be no more overdrawn. Oh God, I'm called in the ministry. Show me how to be effective quickly. Show me how to operate in your anointing. Show me how to touch lives quickly, God. 
Show me, show me what to do. Show me. I need a miracle now, Lord. I need a change now, Lord. I need a move of God now, Lord. I need to be delivered from what has held me bound for many years. Now, Lord, I need a visitation now. Quickly, speedily, move. Move speedily, Lord. This nation, we need God to move speedily. We need God to show up speedily. The world needs God to show up speedily. Social media, television. We need God to show up speedily. Speedily, quickly, without delay. Without delay, God, let there be manifestation of your presence. When you show up on the scene, things change. When Jesus showed up in Jairus' house, they were crying. They instantly went from crying, my child is dead. My hope for this child is gone. My situation is hopeless. Have you been in a place where you feel like it's hopeless? If you've been there, let me tell you about the God of hope. Let me tell you about the God of all hope. When he showed up, that girl was in the room dead. But when Jesus went in that room, that girl came out alive. She came out alive. And the parents went from mourning, ashes on their face, with mourning garments, to celebrating. May God show up in your life and turn your situation around. And may you go from mourning to celebration. The Bible says mourning may endure for night. It is for night. Your sadness is for night. Your disappointment is for night. Your loneliness, rejection, it's for night. Discouragement is for night. The Bible says joy comes in the morning. I decree, may this be your season of joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be no more delay. Let there be no more hindrance. Let there be no more obstacles. Let there be no more sabotage. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God show up for you. Be sure to share the message. Let's encourage other people. Let's be a blessing to others. Every one of you, click the button and just share the prayer. And I know somebody you send it to, God is going to touch their lives. God is going to help them. God is going to deliver them. I love this scripture in Isaiah. It's in Isaiah 43 verse 2. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, when you go through the deep water, deep one, I'll be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, rivers of difficulty, are you in a difficult place? God says, you will not go down. When you walk through the fire of oppression, he says, you will not be burnt up. The flame will not consume you. I pray for you today. The deep water that you are in, that seems like it wants to drown you. Drown your vision. Drown your goal. Drown your joy. It seems like it wants to drown your peace. Come out of it. Because God is with you. You will not drown. You will not die. You will live to declare the works of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. It says, when you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Your strength will not be drowned. Your faith will not be drowned. Your finances will not be drowned. In the name of Jesus, when you walk through fire of oppression, I don't know what is burning you. Sometimes there are things that is burning us and other people can't see it. You can't even tell other people. You don't even have the language to tell other people what is burning you. Whatever it is that is burning you in your life today, may the God who promised, he said when you go through 
fire of oppression. It will not burn you. The flame will not consume you. God will be the fourth man in the fire. Because when he shows up in that fire, <laughs> you will be putting on a garment around you that protects you from that fire burning you. It will burn the bondage because like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, the chain got burnt and fell off of them. They were bound up when they went in the fire. But when they came out, they were free. And the fire did not consume them. The fire you are going through will not consume you. The financial fire will not consume you. The relational fire, it will not destroy you. The fire of delay, it won't stop you. The fire of oppression, the Bible says it will not kill you. Wherever you are feeling oppressed, Today, rise up in liberty. Rise up in freedom. Let those chains of oppression fall off of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. May Jesus show up, walk into your situation and change it. I want to reassure you. Your situation, your condition is not your conclusion. What you're going through is not your conclusion. There is a change that is about to manifest that will change your story and you will have a testimony that cannot be denied. You will have a testimony that cannot be overcome. You will have a testimony that the Lord is for you. You will have a testimony that God still does miracle. You will have a testimony that God is capable and dependable. You will have a testimony that will cause others to say, tell me about your God. The God who did it for you, I want to know him. The God who helped you, I want to know him. The God who answered your prayer, I want to know him. The God who turned your situation around, I want to know him. Tell me about your God. When you have big testimony, it shows you've had a big trouble. It shows that you overcame a mighty difficulty. Whatever it is, I want to remind you, God is able. God is abundantly able. He is still in the miracle working business. And you belong to him. Hallelujah. You belong to him. Look, the book of Luke 18 verse 7 to 8 and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he be along with them I tell you that he will avenge listen to that word again speedily God says I will avenge you speedily what are the injustice that has been done God said speedily I will avenge you Injustice that has been done to you. God said, I will justify you speedily. I will vindicate you speedily. Let there be no more delay to situation in your life transforming. Every counsel against you, may God destroy it in the name of Jesus. The miracle you need for people to ask about your God, may God manifest it. Don't give up. Don't give up yet. The bigger the situation, the bigger the solution. In the name of Jesus, I pray God will answer you speedily in the name of Jesus. God is able. God is capable. God is dependable. God. God is able dependable father god help us god move in the name of jesus your miracle is right around the corner psalm 31 verse 2 bow down thy ears to me deliver me speedily be thou my strong rock and house of defense to save me god is saying i'm the almighty the merciful god 
My ears is bowed to hear your petition and speedily I will move for you. Pray, open your mouth, say, Lord, move speedily for me. Move in my situation without delay. Let there be no more delay to you getting married. Let there be no more delay to you having your own children. Let there be no more delay to your own ministry. Let there be no more delay to restoration in your marriage. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may God, the God of miracle, show up and do a miracle for you. He says, he bowed down his ears to me and deliver me speedily. God, let your ears be bowed. Be bowed to bring healing. Be bowed to bring an end to sadness in my life. Be bowed. Let your ears, oh God, be bowed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your miracle. We thank you, King of kings and the Lord of lords, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 God is capable. We thank him for the victory that only he is able to do. We praise the Lord for the victory that he alone is able to do. The Lord is your shepherd you will not want. In the mighty name of Jesus, God is your shepherd. He will lead you beside the still water. He will restore your soul. He will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. That prepared table before us in the presence of our enemy. That will anoint our head with oil. Our cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. All the days of your life in the name of Jesus. Because goodness and mercy is following you. Good news is going to follow you. Victory is going to follow you. Breakthrough is going to follow you. Anointing is going to follow you. Favor is going to follow you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you Father. We praise you, we bless you, we glorify you, and we honor you. Thank you, God. Touch your people in a miraculous world today. In a sanctified way, may God move in your life. May God move in your home. Whatever the situation is that has caused you disappointment, may God give you divine appointment. Today, for his glory, divine appointment, divine turnaround, divine breakthrough, divine miracle divine manifestation may that be your situation may god manifest quickly speedily powerfully mightily in your life for his glory in jesus name amen thank you lord glory be to god hallelujah god is good god is awesome god is mighty there's a scripture that i uh saw yesterday and it was like I've never seen this before I've never seen this scripture before and I want to read you that scripture because it just absolutely blew my mind and I was like God wow I've never seen this before and I want to read that scripture to you because really God was just like he used that scripture to just open my eyes to to see how God promised that no matter where we are, that he is the one that is still in control. He is the one that is still in charge. He is the one that is still working. He is the one that is still capable. That scripture is in Isaiah 66 verse 9. Isaiah 66 verse 9. I've read the Bible through many times. But Yesterday, as I was reading, it was like this scripture just jumped at me. This scripture just screamed at me. Isaiah 66 verse 9. It says, shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause delivery? In other words, will I allow you to carry a baby and then bring the point to where you're about to deliver and not allow you to deliver? He says, the Lord, shall I, who caused delivery, shut off the womb? Says, your God. What is God saying? What I have put in you, what you are carrying, will I allow you to carry it nine months? And then it gets to the point of delivery and not allow you to deliver? 
If you're a woman, you know what it means. When your due date comes, you are ready. And if it doesn't happen, you are anxious. You are desperate. And God is saying, I'm not going to bring you this far and not see you through. I'm not going to bring you this far and not walk it out. I'm not going to bring you this far and not answer your prayer. God is not like that. He who has begun a good work will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God does not start something and he doesn't finish it. God does not begin a project and is unable to complete it. The Bible tells us that Jesus advised a person that wants to build a house. You must count the cost. Because you don't want to build it halfway and you're not able to complete it. Many of us, we start project, we're not able to complete it. Many of us, we start something and we're not able to finish. Not that we don't want to, we run out of resources. We run out of provision. We run out of what we need. But God never runs dry. God never lacks. He has the end in mind when he started the project. He knows everything that is needed for the project of your life. He has everything that your project need to be completed. That's why he was able to say, he who has begun a good thing, a new thing, will complete it. What God has started in your life may look not so good right now, but everything that God needs for your life to be fulfilled, satisfied, purpose to be carried out, your calling to manifest, your miracle to happen, your restoration to take place, your promotion to come to pass. Everything God needs, he has it. And he's able to use it. He's able to use the people. God can speak to one man concerning you and your story will change. One man, God can speak to them. I don't know what you need for your story to change. I don't know what you need for your marriage to be delivered. I don't know what you need for your children to come around. I don't know what you need for your finances to increase and God meeting your need. But the God who has everything within his power, he is your source and your resource. He is your provider. God is your way maker. He is your miracle worker. He is your dependable God. He can make a way out of no way. He can satisfy every need. God can tell the sun, look, don't burn my child. He can tell the moon, stay in place. He can tell the rain, come down. That's why the psalmist said, I'll look to the hills from where comes my help. My helps come from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He who keep me will not slumber. Behold, he who keep Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. He's my shade at my right hand. He will not allow the sun to burn by day or the moon. He said, I will deliver you. I'll deliver you. I'll deliver your soul. I'll deliver your going out and your coming in from this time and forever. Psalm 121, verse 1 to 3. God is able. God is dependable. God is capable. And God is your helper. You're not junk. You are his child. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. We are fearfully made. We are wonderfully made. We belong to God. We belong to him. You are fearfully made. You are wonderfully made. You belong to God. You resemble him. That's why the devil tremble. Whenever he hears us singing, we are God's own. The apple of his eyes. That's why the devil tremble. Whenever he hears us singing, we are God's own. The apple of his eyes. You are the apple of God's eyes. When you are the apple of God's eyes, nothing is going to mess with you. Nothing is going to trouble you. 
nothing is going to attack you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And you belong to God. You are the apple of his eyes. He'll keep you. He'll preserve you. He said, no matter what you're going through, I'll be there for you. God will be there for you. This week, God will be there for you. You're looking for a job? I pray in the name of Jesus, that job will show up better than the one you expected. You're believing to be married? That spouse will show up better than you expected. You're believing to be healed? God will supernaturally heal your body by his stripes. He'll heal you. You're believing for financial breakthrough. You will not be disgraced. Financially, you will not be naked. God will cover your nakedness. God will make a way for you. You will come out of debt. Creditors will no longer embarrass you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The miracle that you need, when you need it, how you need it, how much you need it for, will show up in your life. In the name of Jesus. I just saw this vision in my head of your miracle knocking at your door. Your miracle is knocking at your door. And as you open, the miracle will come in and satisfy the need that you've had for a long time. God is the miracle. Where he shows up, there's fullness of joy. And there's pleasure forevermore. May God show up in your life. May God show up in your home. May God show up in your marriage. May God show up in your career. May God show up in your ministry. May God show up to your children. Whatever it is that is close to your heart, may God show up and make it peaceful, joyful, and enjoyable in Jesus' name. Everything I've said, it belongs to those who have a personal walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know him personally, I want to invite you into an authentic relationship, a real relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Open up your heart. Pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Save my soul. Put my name in your book. Write it, Lord, with an ink pen or whatever you write the names with that I belong to the family of God from this day forth I no longer want to depend on my own strength, my own ability my own capacity help me to depend on you and I know you are able to help me from this day Jesus become my Lord be my shepherd so that I can represent you well in Jesus name. Amen. I pray for every one of you at the sound of my voice that I've prayed that prayer. Become godly. Become an example in your lifestyle. The things you used to be and do may no longer have power over you. May God give you the grace to live for him from this day forward in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. Have wisdom. This week, may God give you the right word to speak to certain situation. Joey, Maria, Angela, certain situation that it will change the trajectory of that situation in the name of Jesus. One right word that comes out of your mouth can change your story. One right word can give you a job. One right word spoken to the right person can cause you to be so attractive to that person. They can't resist. They can't resist you. They can't say no to you. May God give you word that is divine in the name of Jesus. It was the word of Abigail that caused David to be attracted to her. That prevented David from killing her entire household. The words that came out of her mouth. And cause her to end up being his wife. May your word bring blessings, miracle, favor to your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's share the grace. May the grace, all of you on, on the Facebook, 
I'm encouraging you, share today's prayer. It's going to bless somebody. Who knows? Somebody may get saved that you send it to. I'm trusting you to do your part. I've done mine. God is going to do his as we do our part. And I thank you for it. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. Thank you for your hunger for God. If you're not hungry for God, you won't come on Facebook. You won't come on the prayer line. May God bless you. For real. May God bless you. Indeed. And may the Lord bless you forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Did we share the grace yet? I don't remember if we shared it. I'm the only one here, so nobody can tell me if we shared. Did we share the grace yet? But I thank God. I know I said we were going to share the grace, but I thank God that his grace is sufficient for us. His grace is abounding. His grace will continue to expand in our lives. This week, may it be a week of grace. Thank you, Sharon. She said we haven't shared it. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. I believe the power of God is going to start doing amazing things in our lives. This morning, as I was reading the scripture, I read how when Jesus went to his transfiguration and when he came down, this man came to him and said, the disciples could not heal my son that is demon possessed. And it's interesting what Jesus said. He said, this kind only goes away by prayer and fasting. I want us to fast. I'm praying about the day that we are going to do it, start the fasting. And if you would like to join me, you could just say yes and we'll, we'll, we'll fast. And as a, as a team, as a group, when we fast, <laughs> God does great things. The fasting is going to be God that your power will begin to move in my life to be able to do the things that you have trusted me to do. We're going to fast. And when you fast, you become spiritually powerful. When you are spiritually powerful, you cannot be attacked in your dream, where it manifests in the physical. When you become spiritually powerful, you decree a thing and it is established. So I'm going to pray about the dates. We'll begin this fasting and I'm going to encourage you to be a part of this fasting. If you need a change in your life, we're going to fast and we're going to begin to believe God for mighty power. I believe Jesus is coming back soon. We don't want to be that lukewarm church we want to be the body of christ that is on fire for him angela i see the fire holy ghost fire we will begin to operate in that fire amen god is good in the mighty name of jesus and may his power operate in your life this week if you believe him for a job may god provide for you if you believe him for financial situation in your life to change may god provide for you if you believe in for companion may god provide for you whatever you believe in for a greater spiritual anointing may god provide for you supernaturally suddenly speedily now in jesus name amen i love you shalom and be sure to share the video praise god glory be to god hallelujah